Well, welcome to Fly in the Grand Canyon. Your first guide to prepare for the canyon would be purchasing the Grand Canyon VFR Aeronautical Chart. And you'll find the third edition is the current one right now. It's uh, quite old, April 19, 2001, but it includes the latest changes to the Grand Canyon SFAR 50-2 airspace. Uh, it is actually mandatory that you have this chart with you if you're going to fly within the special flight rules area. This chart was designed to give you most of the information you would need to navigate within this special flight rules area. Uh, the procedures are not especially complex, but they are detailed, and you need to read this chart thoroughly and be sure you understand it. This is a quick overview of the chart. You'll see the large airspace with the hatch boundary. That boundary is considerably larger than the National Park itself. It extends well beyond the boundaries of the Grand Canyon National Park. Also, you see the dark magenta areas. Those are the flight-free zones. With the exception of one, they extend from the surface to 14,499 feet. To the far west, of that flight-free zone extends only up to 7,999 feet. You'll also see in uh, this projection that there are four corridors. Those corridors have specific rules for operations to fly through there. They are designed specifically for general aviation to traverse the canyon. There's also a number of sectors. Two of the sectors, the airspace is open to GA pilots above 8,000 feet, and that would be the one forest to the west, the Pierce Ferry, and the Marble Canyon sector to the northeast. Today's scenic flight will be dealing with the Supai sector, the largest and perhaps the most demanding of all of the sectors. Uh, clear of the flight-free zones, which extend up to 14,499 feet, and clear of the corridors, operations in this sector are allowed uh, up at 10,000 feet and above, clear of those uh, pointed out airspace. Uh, the corridors we'll be using today is a typical scenic flight through one of the most complex uh, portions of the canyon, only in the fact that the terrain is quite variable throughout the canyon. We're going to be departing Prescott and flying to the Zuni Corridor, uh, entering at Zuni Alpha, flying throughout the corridor, and then proceeding across uh, the North Rim toward Boundary Ridge, and then uh, to uh, Dragon North, and then flying through the Dragon Corridor, and then returning to Prescott. Uh, the canyon itself is about 90 nautical miles from Prescott, so the longest portion of this flight will actually be the en route time from Prescott to the Grand Canyon. You'll find the sector altitudes, in this case the Supai sector, the one we're operating in today, restricted from the surface to 9,999 feet. And again, we're talking clear of the corridors and clear of the flight-free zones. You'll also see a magenta box that lists a frequency that you're required under Part 93 to monitor. You'll hear tour traffic on these frequencies, but your requirement is to monitor. You can use it to exchange traffic information as need be, but the regulation is that you must monitor You'll it. also find this box at several different locations, and it requires through all four corridors, if you're flying generally on a northerly direction, you're going to have to be at 11.5 or 13.5 while you're within the confines of the corridor. And when you're heading southbound, you're going to be at 10.5 or 12.5. And in the case of two of the corridors, this actually uh, is contrary to Part 91. But in the SFAR airspace, uh, it takes uh, precedence. Uh, in the case we're flying today through the Zuni corridor, uh, based on Part 91, our northbound heading would be 10.5 or 12.5. But the requirement for all the corridors is the same. Even though our heading is uh, slightly to the west, uh, we're going to have to be flying north at 11.5 or 13.5 in the Zuni corridor. This airspace was designed so most general aviation aircraft could still operate 
under favorable weather conditions throughout the canyon. Whether your aircraft and your skills are up to making the flight is a judgment call on your part. Your aircraft should have an operating ceiling of up to 14,000 feet for safety, and you certainly have to be on top of weather conditions. Strong winds aloft can also be a major concern. The Zuni Corridor is the most demanding in the fact that the terrain is quite high. As you can see on this northern portion of the loop that we're flying today, the terrain comes near 10,000 feet in some locations. Uh, so strong westerly winds, which are not unusual in that area, can uh, contribute to strong up and down drafts. Although the majority of the time, flying conditions in the Grand Canyon are considerably better than their reputation. Well, now we're at the airport, and we've loaded, in this case, a uh, Garmin uh, 496. The route is stored as a route, so we have activated that route, originating at Prescott, going direct to Zuni Alpha, then to Zuni North, Saddle, into the north end of Dragon, and so on. The route will continue and bring us all the way back to Prescott. If we zoom out on the GPS, on the route we just activated, we can see uh, Zuni Alpha, that's the point we're proceeding direct to, and the rest of the route. The dotted blue line around is the outline of the Special Flight Rules area. But you can see the uh, all the waypoints are previously loaded. All we have to do is fly it, and the GPS will take us right through the entire route, up through the Zuni Corridor, across the Saddle Mountain, and then back through the Dragon Corridor, and return to Prescott. Well, we check the weather. Looks great. Uh, weak high pressure ridge in the area. Light westerly winds. Looks like a perfect day to fly the Grand Canyon thus far. Nothing left now. We'll pull it out of the hangar, do a pre-flight, and we'll be on our way.
two hours and seven minutes we made the trip back no turbulence a smooth ride the entire way we had a little headwind on the way up little tailwind on the way back pictures weren't as good as they could be because we had some prescribed burns on the north rim that's why the pictures are a little hazy a few of them but still a nice tour and a beautiful day i hope you enjoyed the trip